Welcome back to What's Up Oxford. We're joined by local writer and author, Emily DeAngelis. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. So you've just released a new book, The Stones of Byron Bay. That's correct. Um, and this is your first young adult book. It is. Can you tell us a little about, uh, tell us a little bit about the book and, and where is it set? Sure. Um, it's published through Latitude 46, which is a small publisher from Northern Ontario. Um, they've been publishing for about eight or nine years and they have 40 or 45 books out at this point. Um, the book is uh, a young adult novel. Magical realism is the genre. So it's a contemporary story, but with a thread of, of something other than supernatural running through it. So in this case, it's a thread of ancient Celtic spiritualism. Um, the story follows 15-year-old Nori Lynch as she um, struggles with her artistic identity. She's in a horrible car accident with her parents. Her father dies. Her prized possession, which is uh, an antique artist's, artist's toolbox that her grandmother gave her, is lost in the fire and her mother's injured. So she's at a, a, a crisis moment in her, in her life and she's dealing with the trauma and the guilt and the grief and turns away from her art as a means of, of uh, expression and healing. So because her mother has been injured, uh, she can't work. So they're forced to call on the kindness of um, an old friend who lives and works on Manitoulin Island. So the story set on Manitoulin Island in a fictitious uh, village called Burn Bay. And so the story follows Nori as she struggles with her emotions and she ends up um, being in contact with a centuries year old spirit guide named Una. And the story has two timelines, Nori's main timeline and Una, her spirit guide's timeline. And um, it's just her recovering her artistic identity, her sense of belonging and healing her relationship with her mother. Wow, it's an intriguing story. It is. And, and, and you have a, a property on Manitoulin Island, that's right? You yes, yes, we do. There? We've, been, we've been going to the island for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 2018, we bought property with the intention of building, which we did start and then COVID hit and sort of delayed our plans. So we're, we're moving through our, our build. And when I say we're building, I do mean my husband and I building ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's been a place that we've always been. And because of its link to, um, it's called Sac um, Spirit Island because of the indigenous history there. Long before white settlers, there were indigenous folks living on the island. And, uh, and when you cross, there's a swing bridge from mainland to the island or the ferry from Tobomori to the island. And when you cross over, you really do feel a difference in the environment. So it's a perfect place for the story to be told, especially with the, the Celtic spiritualism running through the story as well. So a lot of inspiration there for you. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I originally was had a, a real place as the setting, but discovered um, through studying the craft and getting better at it, uh, real places are difficult because real people live there and everybody thinks they're in the story even if they're not. Um, plus, I had a 15-year-old protagonist who needed to be in different places, couldn't drive herself. So I, I creating um, an artificial um, village that was based on a lot of other villages, real villages on Manitoulin Island, mm -hmm. uh, freed up the story a lot. Wow. But uh, and you're in Woodstock. Yes. Through the winter. Yes. So it yeah. must be nearly time to get out there again. Yeah. Next week, probably, we'll be heading there to cut grass and build. And uh, so uh, what about, uh, how is diversity treated in this book? When I, when I first wrote the book, I was, in, and it was a long journey to write this. I had to do a lot of uh, development of the craft of writing. I was a full-time teacher. I had children and a husband. So it, it took a while for this book to come to fruition. And um, in the beginning, there was a lot of conversation around appropriation of voice. And so I was very hesitant to, I didn't want to be accused of appropriating any indigenous voice um, for, for many reasons. But what I learned and what the conversation has now moved to is not appropriating voice through your main protagonist, but reflecting the diversity that actually exists in the community. And on Manitoulin Island, 
there is a huge indigenous population that had to be re represented somehow in the story. And so there are indigenous characters. There are historically in the historic timeline, there is an indigenous family and a connecting of, of a settler family with an indigenous family. So I try to, without, um, without usurping anybody's story, I try to tell my story embedded into the real, very real diverse community that exists there. Mm -hmm. That's great. And where can people get the book? Um, it's available wherever you buy books, bookstores, online, Amazon, with the publisher at Latitude 46. Um, and it's available now. It's, it's been out since it was released May 4th. And we had our big launch in Sudbury on May 5th. So oh, Great. And uh, had a good response? Nice it's been doing well. Um, what you live on for a book is reviews. And um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a company called Kirkus Reviews. They are an international company and it's bookstores and libraries rely heavily on Kirkus Reviews. Mm -hmm. Got a, a phenomenal review with Kirkus and with oh, several bookstagrammers and, and then just with readers. So it's been receiving a lot of positive feedback, which is what you worry about going into this whole project for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing about your book. Uh, do you have a website? I do, emilyjdeangelis.com. And uh, the book isn't directly available through my website. I'm not self-published. I'm with a traditional publisher. But Latitude 46 Publishing has their website, and you can purchase from that, web that website. Great. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back.